When This One's Wife Met H.G. Volume 2, Part 4 May I present, began our host, as she introduced me. My introduction was longer than that of the other members of our group, which is naturally appropriate for one of my elevation. I saw the flicker of impressed approval from this one's wife, but I was not flattered. Yes, I drank of the fuel that came from her brief reaction as a title chaser. Her response was not a surprise. I was also unsurprised and amused that she had failed to recognise me from our first introduction. In fairness, I had looked different, both as a consequence of intent, attire and lighting, plus an entirely different introduction on that occasion altogether. I offered my hand, which she took and shook. Her grip was light, although her hand was slightly clammy. Have you always smelt this way? I was tempted to ask, but I had no desire to appear rude in front of our host, the minister councillor, or Fatty Hornet. I knew that Chelsea politician would have been entertained if I had stated that sentence, but I could maintain a handle on her without putting down this one's wife. Oh, I think I know that place, remarked this one's wife on digesting my introduction. This would be interesting. I somehow doubted her English geography would be her strongest suit. Why would it be? This was a strange and foreign land to her. Despite her acquisition of a title to a place she had no connection to, and even less interest in. Have you visited? I asked politely, my eyes meeting hers. She stared at me as if somehow she thought that this was her gaining some form of admittance to my mind by doing so. No, but I'm sure H has spoken about it she said, as if irritated by having to bring her husband into the conversation. I said nothing more, as waiting for her to... Well, I wasn't entirely sure what we were waiting for her to do, other than for the rusty cogs within her noggin to eventually align and release whatever mundane thought that had been fermenting within her skull into the ether. She looked away for a moment, as she evidently wrestled to extract this thought. I glanced at Chelsea Politician, who was struggling to conceal a smirk. I am terrible at remembering places, too, offered Fatty Hornet, as he sought to rescue her, from the silence. Fucking ass liquor, I hissed in my head at him. I was enjoying her obvious discomfort as she flailed around, trying to make the connection to the name she had heard. Fatty Hornet's well-intentioned intervention, however, failed, as rather than produce a look of appreciation from this one's wife, there was a momentary flash of irritation across her face at the suggestion that she was terrible at something. Of course, she was brilliant at everything, and Fatty Hornet had done her dirty, suggesting otherwise. The irritation was fleeting and was soon replaced by the Cheshire Cat grin once again, and staring eyes, as she battled to form some connection somewhere in her mind. The world turned, babies were born, 
lives evaporated into the ether. Empires fell, and still she had failed to offer whatever the fuck it was that she was trying to say. I had to raise my hand to my mouth and issue a fake cough to stifle the laugh that threatened to burst forth. Nobody in the group was speaking, because they had no idea what she was trying to articulate. Rather than give some kind of clue to those assembled, she just stood staring, and then she began to saw the air with her oversized hands, eyes bulging as if she was invoking some ancient incantation that would somehow bring forth whatever it was like so much demon spawn into the room. I found this whole scene hilarious. She had recognised the name that had been mentioned by way of my introduction, not because she knew me, but because the place had some familiarity to her. I suspected that she had actually got it mixed up with a more well-known but similar-sounding location, which was probably the basis of her confusion. Others had made the same mistake. Her husband would readily know the location, even given his cerebral challenges. What was especially entertaining was that she was offering nothing that might enable someone to help her work things out. The Master Counselor, the Minister Counselor, smooth and polite as he was, was twitching with embarrassment at her writhing. Chelsea Politician didn't care and was finding it as entertaining as I was. Fatty Hornet was looking at her earnestly, trying to find some way in to help her, despite her earlier rebuffing of him. I was aware that she wasn't the sharpest upstairs, no doubt part of the reason Harry found her easy to deal with, that of course, and her martini reputation with regard to discussing Ugandan affairs. I was certainly not going to offer her anything by way of lifeline, I love using silence to make people suffer, so that they desperately say something, anything, to fill the gap. I am most comfortable with staring at someone in silence, drinking in their discomfort. And here I was, revelling in her anxiety, as she grappled, eyes flickering, eyelashes batting up and down, up and down, as she struggled and grappled to make some form of connection. <clears throat> uh, we ought to move on, ma'am, interjected our host. Spoil sport. I heard a sigh of relief burst from the minister-counsellor, like someone who had just reached the gentry-rhinal in time, and I issued a short laugh. This one's wife shot me a quizzical look. I will tell you later, ma'am. I offered enigmatically, which caused her to issue a coquettish smile in my direction. Always make them think they're privy to some form of secret, so simple and so effective. Yes, I suppose so. I'm sure it will come to me later, she explained. Yeah, sure it will. You hadn't a clue what you were trying to say, I thought as the relieved host ushered her royal funkiness on to the next waiting group. "'What was all that about?' asked Fatty Hornet, with genuine concern. "'Stage fright?' offered the minister-counsellor. <laughs> exhorted the Chelsea politician. "'She loves having a stage. More likely she overreached in respect of where His Imperial Excellency here is seated and blew a fuse. "'Yes,' Well, this is a common response when pretenders come into the orbit of the legitimate, I said, watching this one's wife as she began to engage with the next group. I won't argue with that, confirmed Chelsea politician. Her speech will be a real tour de force, I'm sure, she smiled. The anticipation is almost unbearable, I deadpanned. Ah, uh, Yes, the speech. Tedium approached. <laughs>